I was a banker for 20 years here in Houston. Uh, as a banker, I inherited the safe deposit function at my last bank, uh, got very interested in it, started teaching classes at night on how to run it properly. I do a lot of consumer type uh, community presentations. And in every one of those presentations, I hand out a, what I call my report card. And my report card has 30 different items on it that if this person goes into a financial institution, wants to put their most valuable items in a safe deposit box, they need to ask these 30 questions. If that bank cannot respond in a positive, yes, we, we do that, they shouldn't put their stuff there. And some of the things would be, do we leave people in the vault alone? Uh, does it require two keys to open my box? Uh, do you get visitors to sign when they accompany someone into the vault? just common sense things that will keep a dishonest person out of there. Uh, the biggest problem is lack of attention. You know, historically, it's been kind of a stepchild. It doesn't make a whole lot of money. And a lot of institutions, especially the big mega, mega banks, don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. They don't train their people. They don't put good procedures in place. And when a situation like this comes up and somebody makes a claim, their response is, sue us. If you want your stuff back, get an attorney and sue us. They have attorneys on staff. They pay, have to pay those guys and those ladies, whether they, they work or not. So it's kind of the burden is back on the consumer. They've got to take action. Well, the best thing to do is, is approach the financial organization calmly and tell them that uh, these items were in my box. Uh, they're not in there right now. What could have happened to them? And typically the bank's going to say, you have the only two keys. Uh, we have procedures in place. Nothing could happen to them. So basically it's your word against ours if they were ever actually in there. At that point, they need to get some, some representation. Usually when a consumer calls me, they've gone through all those steps. Uh, if, if the financial organization takes the initiative and drills that safe deposit box for past due rent, or maybe they're closing a facility and they're, they're having to terminate those leases, there are many different reasons. But in most of those uh, situations, there are state laws or there are federal laws that institutions have to follow. And if they don't follow those, that's the negligence that can be proven that these, uh, think these acts didn't take place. You didn't have two people in there when you inventory my contents. You won't give me a copy of the inventory so I can verify whether the things were there or not. Uh, in California, the box has to be passed due for six months. They have to give a notice, a written notice to that consumer 30 days before they actually go in and drill the box. So in essence, we can't do anything with that box until it's seven months past due. Or in some of the states say it has to be registered mail or certified mail. But in California, it doesn't. It just says you have to give that notice. But again, if, if somebody comes back and says, you didn't, I didn't get a notice, you didn't send me a notice, prove to me you did it, I would suggest the bank have proof, either a, a return letter or a receipt showing that letter was actually delivered. Well, it doesn't get a whole lot of publicity unless somebody takes it upon themselves to contact somebody like you uh, or contacts an attorney who contacts you. And uh, in the last year, I think I've done at least three of these interviews with the attorneys and the consumers and the banks and this, that, and the other. And that's how the word gets out. But unless somebody takes action, that's, that's what I'm saying. If you don't take action, nothing's going to happen.